Good morning, everybody. We are on our way. It's just me and Jules in the car right now. We're on our way to doggy daycare. We're gonna drop her off to say hello to her puppy friends today. And then we're gonna go back home and have a look at the new Jeep Grand Cherokee because I found some spy photos of it and it got me excited. So I wanna see what we can do with the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the 2021 model. You have to have a look at this. We got some new Fosters. Hi. Good morning. Are you hungry? Let's get you some food. So here we have it. This is the Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee 2019. Might be a 2020 model, not really sure, but it's the latest one. And this is the one we're going to redesign today. So what are we going to do with this redesign here? Well, I want to create a new front end, of course. I want to create some, some new uh, lines on the side of the car and work on the graphics in the front, the lights, the air intakes and all of this stuff. Because this, to me, it's a good looking car. It looks very solid, it looks very soccer mom SUV type. But what I wanna do in this video is to create a Jeep Grand Cherokee that I would personally drive. So what does that mean specifically? Well, we are going to, uh, these wheels just, first of all, these are the ones that pop up. When I first saw this image, they need to go. We need to have some cooler wheels on there, obviously. For the rest of the front, we're going to change and redesign the front. So it's going to be like, think of it as a 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8. That's the, one, that's the feeling that we're going with here. Going to change the headlights, going to make the grill. This to me, these seven uh, slots here, that they're such a big part of what Jeep is and the identity of Jeep. So I want to have it be more pronounced in the front. We do it by extending the height of this grill. So I want these slots to go down somewhere to this point right here. And that way it's more, more pronounced and kind of sets this Jeep Grand Cherokee apart from other SUVs with the similar grill volumes we want to have it be big as soon as you see it you want to know that it's a jeep and then we're going to play around with the hood here as well you see that this has a curvature here that goes around the hood i want to keep this curvature and i want to make that more pronounced as well because if you think of it this way the jeep is like one of these brands that still has the original uh ruggedness feeling to it with the wrangler of course so i want to add some i want to take some of that ruggedness into these more civilized sedan if you want to call it that and we do that by adding details such as some more pronounced chamfers in the hood right here and have this have this kind of half circle in the in the in the hood something like that and make it more sharp and then another thing i want to add to to add some confidence to the to the body and the the side of the car is to raise the shoulder line so i want to have this line right here that goes there i want to have that connect to the end to the corner of the headlight and then through the the handles of the car and to this point back here so i want to bring that up and give it more powerful stance if you look at it from the rear and from the front you're gonna see the shoulder lines kind of tilt up earlier than have a sloping side to it if that makes sense another change we're going to make is this part right here and the, the whole front bumper the whole front in general we're going to redesign it and create something cool another thing we're going to change is these uh, lights down here and the air intake down here this is a obviously a fake air intake you can see that because there are no holes in there but what we're gonna make is uh, some new graphics down here and in general just change the whole front of the car the bumper the lights the grill the lower part, I, I want to break this line up here because to me it's too long of a line where nothing goes on. So I kind of want to break it up here. And also I have some graphics inside of the bumper to make it more uh, interesting to look at. Because right now, as you can see, I don't know if you've seen my first Porsche 911 992 video with the three lines in the rear. When you have three parallel lines like that, it just, yeah, it gets boring. It doesn't, it, there's nothing going on in the graphics of the front. So what I want to do with these three lines here, this is line number one, line number two, and line number three. And they have the exact same distance between them as well. So we got to kind of have to break that up in some ways and add some graphics to those lines and break them up with with some chamfers or whatever we can come up with to make it look nice. 
With that said, let's jump into the redesign. Let's get to work. Let's see what we can do with this Grand Cherokee. All right, here we are inside of Photoshop with uh, the Jeep Grand Cherokee 2019. We're going to try to make it into a 2021 model. I think that's when they said that they were going to drop the new version. I'm actually a big fan of Jeep because of the the things that I mentioned in the in the brief that I think I, I really like that they stuck with the essence of what Jeep has always been, which is a rugged, more functional brand. And it doesn't have to be so much, you know, aimed towards design and styling, but more so, and I'm talking about the Wrangler now, they obviously have all these Renegades and all the normal Cherokees and all of these models, but the Wrangler is still one of the, 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 the cars or the SUVs that you buy because it's a lifestyle. It, it, it's, a, it's, it's such a strong brand, the Wrangler itself, that uh, it's very rare to find those type of cars in the modern world. And I really hope they uh, keep the Wrangler design language as it is and don't try to modernize it and stylize it too much. The new Wrangler, the update that they just released, it reminds me a lot of the, the G-Wagon. Well, and it's a kind of a similar strategy with that update that you keep the same styling and you keep the, the, the branding of the model itself, but you update everything that's underneath the car. And everybody says that, or most people say that the new Wrangler, it's, it's, it's a totally different car or SUV to drive than the old one. You can take it on longer trips without getting tired because it's uncomfortable. And that's kind of what they did with the G-Wagon itself. I've heard people say that it's like the old G-Wagon, it's like driving a, 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 like a farm equipment or something like that. But the new one is completely different. It feels like a luxury SUV, even though they kept the original shape and design, the classic design of the, of the model itself. And I really like that. We've actually owned a couple of Cherokees ourselves, not new ones, but older ones. And we had one, I think it was a, uh, a 1996 red, I think it was a 96, and I loved that SUV so much. It has a, it had a small lift kit on it with some other tires. I'm not sure. I don't know a lot about lift kits and stuff, but I know it wasn't stock. I'm going to show you a picture of it right here. And we used this uh, Cherokee. We drove it back and forth to Iowa. <laughs> we moved up to Iowa in 2000 and uh, when was this? 15 maybe? 14? Uh, after I quit my job for the first time, we thought, let's move up to Iowa. My wife is from there and uh, just see how things go because I wanted to work for myself. So we decided to just rent a house there from one of uh, my wife's relatives. She, they had a house that nobody was using so we could, we, we could rent it when we were figuring stuff out. So we just packed the Jeep and packed all the animals and it took off from Florida up to Iowa. And a funny thing about that is we moved during the worst winter since 96. So you can imagine going from sunny Florida and then boom, all of a sudden come up to Iowa and it's like two, a, a meter of snow or three feet of snow when we come up there. And the Jeep doesn't have, it's not a four wheel drive Jeep. So we had a lot of issues with that. And on top of that, we didn't have any heat in the Jeep, which made it very, very cozy inside of that uh, Jeep. But you know, it's all memories. It's a, it's a lot of, it was a great car. I just loved it. I'm, I'm kind of sad that we sold it, but it was falling apart. I didn't really have the time or knowledge to fix it. So we just sold that. And we actually ended up moving back down to Florida. And that's another thing I want to touch on is that if you go for uh, whatever goal you have or whatever, uh, you know, thing you want to do. If, the, if, for example, if you're like me and you want to work for yourself. When I first quit my job the first time in 2014, I think it was, I was ready. I thought I was going to, you know, uh, work as a freelance designer, start the sketch monkey and all of that. But it turned out it didn't work out. I just, it didn't, it didn't, uh, we couldn't stay afloat financially. So what we ended doing is I got a job offer from uh, Deerfield Beach in close to Fort Lauderdale with a great company that a lot of my friends were already working at from, from down here in Florida. So they were looking for a designer. So we ended moving back 
packing the Jeep again and moving back to Deerfield Beach, Florida. And I can tell you this, the, the, when we went to the beach the first time from moving to, I, up to from Iowa, from the winter up there to the beaches in Florida, <laughs> we, we knew that we had made the right decision by moving back to Florida. You know, nothing bad about Iowa, but I'm from Sweden. I've had a bunch of uh, really cold winters in my life. And I think I'm always going to be a more angle towards towards living in a warm place and go visiting winter than the other way around. So I don't want to live in a cold place and every now and then go visiting the beach. I want it to be beach whenever I want to. And if I want to, if I have the choice, I can go you know, visit some snowy place and some cold place. That's kind of how I, how I see it. But just to touch on this, uh, if you want to start something by yourself or you want to start a YouTube channel or you want to start a freelance agency or whatever it is you're trying to do, the first time you do it, you are most likely not... I'm not saying you're not going to succeed, but you're most likely going to face challenges that you didn't expect. And that's just part of the journey. That's just what everybody goes through. Every single person that you see online that, that has a fantastic Instagram feed with all the highlights of their lives, they, you know, nobody really shows the failures. But it was, a, it was a stressful time. We moved up there and we had the house and uh, you know, I was really trying to, to get some projects in, some design projects and getting the SketchMonk app in running and all of this but you know I'm, I'm really happy it didn't work out because that gave us the chance to move back to florida and i'm really happy for that and also i'm happy for the experience that i had on that other second company that i worked at because it was a great company to work for even though i always after about after just a few months there i started to feel like all right this is just temporary i really want to work for myself and do something on my own but I'm grateful for this opportunity to work here now, so I'm gonna plan it better this time and do it again, but in about in a couple of years' time. And that what happened. In, that's what happened in 2016 when I quit my job for the second time. And this time it went it went a lot better because I had the experience from the first time. I knew what challenges I was going to face, and I knew how to face them in a more effective way I'm, I'm still not where i want to be i don't think i've ever i've ever going to be where i want to be because if if you think of it like this if you're if you have a goal and you reach the goal and you're satisfied then like why what 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 else is there to 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 push forward for you know i i think you should always have goals and when you reach the goals you should always set a higher goal to, to reach for because that's what makes it exciting if you have a if you don't have a goal and you're just doing things for uh, you know not not trying to better yourself and you know become better every day at what you do then I don't see the point of doing it at all but anyway that this this just went on a completely <laughs> different tangent than I was going to talk about which is of course the redesign of this Jeep Grand Cherokee right here. But I just wanted to share because I know there are a lot of people out there. Uh, maybe it's you, maybe it's not you, maybe it's somebody you know who who work at a place and they, they have this they have this thought or feeling in the back of their mind that they want to do something more and maybe they want to do something on their own. And it's definitely possible, but I just want to to share that, you know, there will be some failures. I'm I'm sure there will be failures. And that's okay. That's normal. You learn from those and then you do it again. Uh, but this time you take what you learned from the first time and you apply that knowledge to the second time around and it will get, you will get better and better at what you're trying to do. Anyway, this redesign right here. So what we did, I actually decided to turn the lights off for this redesign right here because I think the I, I kind of overkilled it with the, the with the blue lights there so I just turned those off for this redesign I think it looks a lot better it looks like it's in a showroom just sitting there waiting for me to jump in and drive away with it because I love this design of the car I wanted to keep it stealthy but not you know one of those tacky overdone just matte black 
everything on the car, even the windshields and uh, rims and wheels and everything. I wanted to keep it kind of stealthy, but at the same time classy, keep some parts glossy and some parts matte, and not just wrap the whole car in matte black. Just have it be a little bit more interesting than that. That, that was the goal, and I think it turned out really cool. I love this design. I hope they will make something like this in SRT8, even though it's kind of the most useless SUV ever to put like in Hellcat. I'm not sure what, what type of engine they have in it, but put, uh, I know they, they, they wouldn't probably say no to putting a 707 horsepower V8 in an SUV, even though it makes completely no sense at all, but it's still a cool, cool thing to do. You know, it's just fun to do it. So why not? And they have the materials and engine already developed, so they might as well try it out. Anyway, this is the redesign. This is the final result right here. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope I didn't ramble too much. Maybe I did this time around, I don't know. Hopefully you got something out of it. That's, that's what I'm hoping for. That's the whole reason why I told you about my story and the failures. That was just one failure. There have been several failures along the way and I'm sure there will be more in the future and I look forward to them because every failure, you learn something new and you apply it the next time. Thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today. I'm the Sketch Monkey. Take care and I will see you in the next video.